God is love. For God so loved the world, the whole world, not just my world. God so loved every person in this world and sent Jesus to teach us what love looks like. Pyaar sahinshil hota hai. L'amour est plein de bonté, l'amour. El amor no es envidia. Liefde prongt niet. Lubov ni gardica. Sarang en en shipega opta. L'amour pae egois. Tin yeo se chang dhe dang nong zhen. Ie gab ik sa knai to ka ko puwe khun kaan ni. Premlai dushtma prasanna gardaina. El mohabba te fra fel hak. Bhalo basha shorbo da rukha kore. Amor sempre confirma. Liebe sucht nicht seinen eigenen Vorteil. Amour toujours persévéré. Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. To love every person, every nationality, every background, every history every soul because in life we find faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love hello everyone and welcome to this special good friday edition of camza connect in the Salvation Army, we love using music in our worship. So today we bring you a Good Friday service which is rich in music and which we hope will bring a blessing to you and a challenge to this Easter time. Yeah, at the time of this recording, um, our world has been turned upside down. Things that we've been used to having, we can't have anymore. Our routines are different. Uh, our lifestyles have changed. Um, we're all wondering how long this will all go on for. That's right. And so in this episode, we want to take you back to that first Good Friday and tell you why the supreme sacrifice of Jesus 2000 years ago is enough to return an upside down life and an upside down world to order again. But first, to help us turn our thoughts to that extraordinary day in history, we're going to join in the singing of a beautiful Good Friday hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
was on the cross that first Good Friday, Jesus used some words that were prayers to his Father in heaven. Words like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, because prayer is uh, simply a conversation with God, and it was an important part of Jesus' life, even in his last hours. And it's an important aspect of the Christian life for all those who follow Jesus today. So please, join with us now in a time of prayer as we listen to two of our congregation members, Sam and Judith. Then we'll sing together, once again, I look upon your sacrifice. Dear God, there are so many things that I don't understand. We are making so many sacrifices at the moment to stay safe and keep other people safe. Help us to remember that none of this compares to the sacrifice that you made by letting Jesus take the blame for everything that we have ever done wrong and everything that we will ever do wrong so that we will have life forever. Help us not to mess up the life that you have given us when we are sad and lonely. Help us to see that we have so many people that love us. When we are cross and frustrated, help us realise that you see it too and are with us every moment. Please look after our friends and family when we can't do it ourselves and keep us looking up to see what lovely things are around us, which were all made by you. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence today to reflect upon the death of your Son. We remember how Jesus willingly gave his life on the cross that we might receive forgiveness for our sin and be reconciled to you. The pain and suffering he endured for humanity demonstrates the great love he has for each of us as individuals. On this Good Friday, help us to value even more all that Jesus has done for us and continue to make Calvary real to us. Bring to this day of mixed emotions the calming assurance of your peace which passes all understanding and may the remembrance of Calvary bring hope to each one of us. Accept today our grateful thanks, our praise and our adoration as we make our prayer in the name of Jesus, our Saviour.
chapter of St John's Gospel from the 27th verse reads, Jesus, seeing that everything had been completed so that the scripture record might also be complete, then said, I'm thirsty. A jug of sour wine was standing by. Someone put a sponge soaked with the wine on a javelin and lifted it to his mouth. After he took the wine, Jesus said, it's done, complete. Bowing his head, he offered up his spirit. Then the Jews, since it was the day of Sabbath preparation, and so the bodies wouldn't stay on the crosses over the Sabbath, for it was a high holy day that year, petitioned Pilate that their legs be broken to speed death, and the bodies taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man crucified with Jesus, then the other. When they got to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers stabbed him in the side with his spear. Blood and water gushed out. The eyewitness to these things has presented an accurate report. He saw it himself and is telling the truth so that you also will believe. These things that happened confirm the scripture. Not a bone in his body was broken. And the other scripture that reads, they will stare at the one they pierced. A lovely song with great words that provide a challenge and a blessing to us on this Good Friday. And um, we want to say thank you to some of our band members who helped us with the accompaniment um, as we sang together. Thanks to Ray for bringing the scriptures to us as well. And now we go to uh, another song. Um, this song was written more than 350 years ago by Samuel Crossman, who was a Puritan minister and also a Bachelor of Divinity here in Cambridge. And he penned this beautiful hymn that asks a question that thousands of Jesus' followers have been asking throughout history. Who am I that Jesus would die for me? The song is the oldest song in the Salvation Army hymn book and today it is commonly joined with John Ireland's touching music written in 1918 especially for this text. So we hope that you enjoy singing with us. My song is Love Unknown.
I have been fascinated and saddened as I've read and listened to reports of people, even in the midst of this situation, who are seeking uh, to do things for their own good. For instance, trying to defraud, uh, trying to cause physical harm, perhaps to shops and security staff. And I'm amazed by that when in the midst of this situation we find ourselves in, we all, most of us are, pulling together and doing our best to support one another. I am also amazed by the fact that we tend to want to believe whatever we see written down. And so there are reports on social media of different things that you can do to protect yourself, to save yourself from this virus. Each day the BBC are doing a little piece uh, where a reporter talks about health myths that you should ignore. It's on their news channel and I catch it usually very late on at night. And they take the myths that are being put out there on social media and they give the truth of the matter, describe exactly what we are supposed to be doing. The government is very clear. The medical experts are clear. The scientists are clear not just in this country, but in other countries all around the world, what it is we should do. We should blow our nose into a, a hanky and throw it away. We should wash our hands often. We should stay indoors. We should protect our NHS. The message is clear, yet I am amazed that we want to believe, that we're desperate enough that if it seems plausible, then we believe it, whether it's factual or not. When the angel spoke to Joseph about the fact that Mary was expecting a child, he told Joseph that when the child was born, they were to give him the name Jesus. And the reason for that is because his name would mean he would save his people from their sins. This is really important. He will save his people from their sins. Now you might think to yourself, sins, what are those? And am I a sinner? Well, scripture also tells us in Romans 3 and 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the Salvation Army have this as part of their doctrines. We believe that our first parents were created in a state of innocency, but by their disobedience, they lost their purity and happiness and that in consequence of their fall, all men have become sinners, totally depraved and as such are justly exposed to the wrath of God. So we are all sinners, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're bad people. We are good people. There are loads of good people in the world who do great things. We could probably name a whole load of them today, but it means that we are separated from God. Being a sinner means we're on one side of the divide and God is on the other, and there is no bridge as yet to join us with him. God saw this. He saw that the world was in need of a saviour and as a God of love, he sent his son Jesus into the world to bridge that gap. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me. And through the shedding of his blood, a once and for all time sacrifice was made. He paid the price. And as the, the Chris Tomlin song says, he became sin who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. He became sin, this perfect man, this perfect human being became sin and paid the price for you and for me so that we could be made right with God. Why? Because he loves us. Scripture also tells us he loves us so much. He loves the whole world that Jesus came to save us once and for all time from our sin. If we want to be saved from our sin, our doubt, our fears, our anxiety, our regrets, our failure, all the things that would seek to separate us from God, from a God who loves, then we need to come to the cross and accept what Jesus is offering us. He is offering to take the old self and make us into new creations people who will be free from the burden 
and chains that enslave us, free from being and feeling as if we're downtrodden and that the world is out to get us. And instead he says, I have come that you may have life, life that is enjoyable, abundant, peaceful, life where we know we are forgiven and made right with God, life where we know where we're going when all of this is over, that we have the eternal home with him in heaven. We're going to listen just now as Imogen sings to us, nothing but thy blood can save me. And as she sings, as you listen to the words, please today take a moment to thank God for his sacrifice, to thank Jesus for giving up his life for us and perhaps for the first time come to him and allow the sacrifice of the cross to make a difference in your life.
Thank you for joining with us in our short Good Friday service and we hope that you will be able to join in our other videos too. That's right, we'll be here on Easter Day for episode 5 of Kamsa Connect when we'll be celebrating Jesus' victory over death. In a moment, we're going to close our service with the compelling Good Friday song, The Power of the Cross. That's right, but first, join us in a prayer. Father, how can we thank you enough? You did not spare your own son, but gave him for us. Thank you for Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, as he lives in us by the Holy Spirit, may we become living sacrifices, pouring out all that we have, all that we are, and all that we hope to be into the advancement of your kingdom. This we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. So then everybody, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God, God bless you. you.